Welcome into episode eight of Rangers Deep in the Heart, where I take you inside the Rangers organization through its players, their families, and the staff behind it. This show is presented by Justin, the official boot of the Texas Rangers. I'm Hannah Wink. Joining me today is Righty Dane Dunning and his wife, Rachel. Thank you both for coming on the show. Thank, Thank you for having us. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Us. How are you guys doing today? I'm doing great. Yeah, we got some sleep tonight, so or last night, so that was that was pretty nice. Mm-hmm. Our uh, our son has been, you know, battling some sickness. He's had a double ear infection for the past two days now, two days. Mm-hmm. So um, he hasn't been sleeping the greatest those past two days, but he slept through he slept through last night, and I think he woke up like six forty five or mm-hmm. something like that. And fortunately, my parents are here, so my mom was like, "Oh, I'll take him. You guys go back to sleep." So yeah. that was very nice. I love that. How's Mac doing besides a double ear infection? Um, for the most part, he's doing really good. Just wants to play, and we have these little, like, plastic balls upstairs that he just grabs and throws. We bought him, like, the little golf toy set and, like, the baseball toy set, and uh, it's funny watching him walk around with that. I think he's starting I think he's starting to get the concept of, like, swinging it now because he was doing that yesterday, like, last night for a little bit, so hopefully... Uh, you forgot something that he has though that we just got him. Well, you we got him. We got him a pickleball paddle too. Oh, it's yeah. not just yep. golf and baseball. Yes. He has a small little pickleball paddle that he swings around the house, hitting yeah. us and hitting the balls. It's, he's at a, such yeah. a fun age now. So, a future athlete in the family is that what y'all are getting at? Yes. Well, I mean, hopefully. I think so. Um, I mean, whatever his interest is, it doesn't matter if it's sports or not. Um, but I, I'm hoping sports. I love that. We'll yeah. get to plenty of Matt conversations later in the show, but let's start off with some baseball. Dane and June, you shifted from the rotation to the bullpen when Max Scherzer came back off yep. the IL. Mentally, what has been the biggest adjustment you've made with that kind of workload? Well, for the biggest part, it's just knowing when you're going to be coming in the game and preparing yourself for that time. So, like, usually, like, when I when I move from the starting rotation to the bullpen, I'm usually going to be the long guy. I'm not going to be, you know, I'm not going to be the fireman. I'm not going to be a closer or anything like that. So it's just knowing the situation of how the game's playing and being able to prepare myself for, hey, like, you know, that call if, if needed in the third inning or fourth inning or fifth inning. Because uh, usually right around, like, the sixth or seventh, it's going to be more, like, especially the seventh, it'll be, like, more spores. And then the eighth with David Robertson and then obviously Kirby closing. So it's just – Knowing how the situation and kind of the flow of the game, you can kind of feel play out. Um, you know, yesterday, um, especially early on, Eovaldi did a great job, but his pitch count was a little bit higher. So it's like, all right, hey, like end of the second, third inning, I'm going to start warming up, like start doing my stretches and my way to balls. You know, that way if that phone call comes in the fourth or fifth, you know, I'm prepared and I'm ready. So, I mean, that's kind of the biggest thing. And then taking it from there going into the game, you know, as a starter, like you prepare – like, I'll stretch, play catch, I'll do my bullpen routine, and then I go in. But, like, when that phone calls to go down, like, you have, like, that adrenaline spike and all that. So it's just learning how to calm yourself down in that situation and be able to not work too quick on that bullpen mound. Because, like, a lot of times what happens is, like, you start working fast, working fast, working fast to try to get warmed. And then when you come in the game, you kind of stay at that speed. And so it's like, you know, being able to work at your own pace in that, but also make sure you're ready. So that's really the biggest things. When it comes to kind of calming down those nerves of adrenaline when you're about to come out of the bullpen, what is the biggest difference from that feel of adrenaline to a start day? Um, Well, the adrenaline spike happens when that phone call hits and your name's going. And on a start day, it's pretty much as soon as I wake up, it's like, you know, nerves are a little high, like you go, especially as the day gets closer, like closer to the start, like the nerves are a little bit higher than uh, usually it's big adrenaline spike when I go out and start playing catch. And like, usually I'm super nervous in the bullpen before a hand throwing. And then it's weird. It's like, as soon as I take a step on the field, it's like gone, you know, just back to being, you know, locked in tunnel vision, just kind of how, you know, you, we do this every day for you know, years on end. So it's like you get, once you get into that field and that position, I think that's when the adrenaline really spikes and like, you know, all the nervousness goes away. You've been a starter for most of your career. So how does that set you up for success in a long relief role? Well, it's just being able to be built up at innings and knowing how to get out of certain situations of, you know, like in, uh, as a starter, you'll work into some traffic and be able to work out of it. Uh, just because, I mean, mainly you have that built-up tolerance of throwing, you know, 100-something pitches a game. And so being a long guy, you know, hopefully it gets, it's good, quick, clean innings and it's 
10 pitches, 15 pitches an inning, and it's one, two, three. Uh, but there's there's innings where you're going to grind through it. You know, you just don't have your stuff that day, or, you know, the hitters are battling, they're fouling off pitches, or you just don't get that call from the umpire. Um, you know, hits are going to happen and stuff like that, but it's just being able to battle through each inning. And, you know, like a lot of a lot of relief guys, you know, 30 pitches might be their max, but as a long guy, you know, I'm going to be going 60, 70 pitches probably. And so just being able to do that as efficiently as possible. Now that you aren't starting every fifth day, what does your daily preparation look like from the time you get to the ballpark until essentially going into the game? Yeah, so that that's one of the biggest changes is just my off off the field work. It's, I mean, I go, I get to the field around like one o'clock. You would say probably like one one thirty, right? Yeah. Yeah, and then it's like usually eat lunch right then, but then it's right after that. I go on the field, I'll run poles or I'll do my running or usually like for the most part of my career, I've always been on the treadmill, but I've kind of transitioned to like running poles lately. Uh, treadmill's getting a little boring, but, um, but I'll usually run, you know, like a couple miles, like a mile or two. And then um, from there, I'll go in on the first day of every series. So if it's a three game series, the first day I'll lift and do a full total body, total body lift. Um, so that usually takes me until about, 3.30 ish um, and then f- like maybe 3.20 usually I have about 10 minutes after my lift to go to my like the pitchers meeting so the first day we have like a pitchers meeting we'll scout all the hitters from there I go back to the locker room get changed I go out on the field do my catch play my stretches my uh, weighted balls and then the extra conditioning that we have then so I'll do that. Usually that's consistent more of like sprint work and stuff like that. By that time, it's usually around like 5, 5.15-ish we get inside. Um, then it's eat lunch. I have 30 minutes to sit down, kind of do whatever, chat with the teammates. You know, if if ping pong is available, I'll play a game of ping pong or something like that just to kind of uh, get my mind off baseball for the, the short time before going to start get ready. And then 6 o'clock, back in the weight room stretches, making sure that my body is – prepared for the game and then 6 30 stretches by the trainer got about 10 minutes after that to sit and get changed and shower if I need to and then uh, anthem and then game time so that's the first day and then the second day is very similar but instead of a total body lift it's more of a plyometric stuff and I get a little bit more time on that second day just because we don't have the pitchers meeting so that's about it and then the third day is usually day game and it's no running just I get to the field, I stretch, play catch, and then make sure I'm ready for the game. Rachel, what is the biggest difference that you see from Dane on the mound to Dane at home as a dad? Dane at home as a dad is so fun to watch. Um, And what I'm amazed at is he's able to keep all of the stress of baseball outside of the house. And honestly, I don't know how these guys do it because I'm a nervous wreck when I do anything. Like, even doing this, I'm nervous. So for them to be in front of thousands of people and not show that nervousness at home, like, leading up to a game, I'm just amazed by them. And Dane is just the best best dad ever, and it's so fun to watch him grow. Um, and for us to go, grow together um, with Mag and as a family. Who would you say is the dad of the Rangers bullpen? <laughs> Ooh. Um, I mean, definitely Kirby and David Robertson. I mean, David Robertson's got 15, 16 years in the in the major leagues. Kirby's right up there with, like, I think eight or nine. Uh, but, I mean, like, both of them are, you know, like David Robertson's got three kids, and then Kirby's got two kids, and – um, a lot of the guys on the team have kids, but just mm-hmm. those older veterans, they just bring that like whole dad vibe to it. So like mm-hmm. David Robertson, and Kirby are definitely the top two. And especially like, you know, you could have a really great outing mm-hmm. and it's just unfortunate. Like, you know, pit, like some like just kind of bleeds through, like hits bleeds through and like you might give up a run or two and you're pissed off and like you're mad and like you're sitting at your locker and you don't want to talk to you like anyone like you're just pissed and like they'll come up to you and be like hey like you threw the ball great like like keep your head up like make sure it's just that positive you know encouragement and that positive reinforcement it's like hey like you know it was just very unfortunate kind of what happened like and that's baseball like you know you I've thrown sliders and broke people's bats and they get base hits and then at the same time I've thrown middle middle heaters that have been hit 105 and somehow it flies out to the warning track so um it just kind of, you know, it kind of happens that way. And so, like, those situations where, like, you know, you're pounding the strike zone, you're throwing balls, like, very well, and it's just very un- 
very unfortunate timely hitting or, you know, those guys are professional hitters and they just put a good swing on a ball and stuff like that. Like they make sure to know, like to let you know, like, Hey man, like you threw the ball well, stuff like that. And it's just, it's nice. Cause it's that, you know, that dad type moment where it's just like, you know, Hey, thanks. I appreciate that. And, um, so I'll definitely say those two. Rachel, going back to Dane off the field, whether he has an incredible outing or an outing that he might want to make some adjustments on next time if it didn't go his way, do you see a difference in him at home? I don't at all. I think, like I said earlier, he's just so great at separating baseball life from family life, and that's something I really admire about him and um, appreciate, too, because it wouldn't be fun if he had a bad game and he's coming home grumpy. I think he just leaves everything at the door, or during the drive home, he might let himself be a little upset, but we never see it when he comes through the door. Yeah. Has it always been that way for you? I mean, yeah. Um, I try not to take stuff from the field home. Like, I try to get it out. You know, I might stay a little bit longer at the field mm -hmm. uh, and get home a little bit later. You know, just got to get some of that frustration out and stuff like that. And then there might be a few bad words being said in the car ride back. <laughs> um, but, I mean, for the most part, like, I mean, Rachel and Mac, they have no dictation of baseball in situations. And it's it would be unfair to me to go back and be grumpy and, you know, have a bad attitude towards them. Mm -hmm when there's they like it has nothing to do with them and so you know they're like she's my rock and she's gonna bring like the happiness out of me and same mm -hmm. with mac like they're my like that's my family that's you know people that i want to go and be happy with and like stuff like that so when i get home i try to like wipe it and um you know try to bring a positive mentality you know i could be you know pissed off and uh depressed a little bit but they um you know they, they they're there for me and mm -hmm. So we try to like, like I try to like make sure it's it's good. And I think like the biggest thing was uh, where I've kind of learned that from was my dad. My dad was you know 20 years in the military. He spent so much time 20 years in the army. He spent so much time you know as a drill instructor or you know out on the field and doing stuff like that. And you know during there like as a drill sergeant, you're cussing at people nonstop. You're and, like you kind of like he tells me all the time. It, it got him in a bad spot at times because he's just yelling at people, yelling at people, yelling at people. And it's like he gets home and it's like his initial reaction is just to be like, snap at us. To, like, we're not doing something. And he said he had to learn how to like flip that switch of like, you know, I get home, you know, I can't cuss or I can't, um, you know, I don't need to be snappy. Like I need to be more patient and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And he did a really good job with us growing up, like being able to do to do that. And, um, you know, I take I take pride in that. And that's because of him. How did your dad being a drill sergeant help with your discipline as a player? Um, that one, I think, is – I would probably say it was more on my brother than me. He got mm – -hmm. I mean, I'm six and a half years younger than my brother and eight and a half years younger than my sister. And, like, I think that he was a little bit more strict with them and a little bit more relaxed with me. I mean, I'm a third kid. He's the baby. The th <laughs> yeah, yeah. The, the third kid kind of just like, hey, yeah, do whatever you want. Um, but no, I mean, like he, he definitely instilled, you know, like the work ethic of practice mm -hmm. and getting things like, you know, going through what I need to do in my routines and stuff like that. And I mean, growing up, you know, I've, I always wanted to play shortstop. So that's why I'm very envious of Corey. Um, <laughs> but like growing up, like it was, I would get home from school and it's like, all right, do your homework, go hit, hit off the tee and then you can go play with your mm -hmm. friends. And it's like, Little things like that, like, I used to have to wake up and do 100 push-ups, um, like, before I did anything, like, during the summers and stuff like that. Make um, your bed. Yeah. Like, do the push-ups. Yep, yep. I had, like, night. So, like, little things like that is just, like, kind of help instill my routine, in which I think reflects to me now where it's, like, I get to the field and it's, like, all right, eat, run, work out, then scouting, and then go do practice on the field and stuff like that. And it's, like, I have a set routine and usually a set time. And, like, I might – tweaked something here and there to, based on how I feel uh like this past this past week with Mac with the double ear infection he was a little tired so I was kind of like you know hey I'm gonna back off a little bit on on today's lift or you know sometimes I'm feeling good and it's like hey I want to do a little bit more so it just kind of gets tweaked about that but I think that really is the biggest thing that brought you know my routine in place when you think about Mac, you know, five, ten years down the line, going off to school and having a routine, what is something that you'll take from the way that your dad raised you into how you'll raise Mac? Oh, that's a good question. Um, I mean, I guess we'll see when we get there. Um, 
as much as I want to be like, you know, oh, I want he's going to do this and this and this, like, you know, he might be the type of kid that's like, you know, hey, I, I need to knock out my homework or whatever. Or he might be the type of kid that's like, I don't screw homework, I'm not doing it, blah, blah, blah. And we might have to, you know, for, kind of get him to do it. Um, so I guess it really just depends. Like, I'm, I'm not, like, it's funny because a lot of people will be like, oh, well, he's going to play baseball, he's going to do this. And it's like, you know, if he wants to play baseball, he can. Like, I'm not going to push him into something that he doesn't want to do. Um, but I'm going to be there to support him on the things that he wants to do. Well, we'll have a lot of conversations around parenting and Mac right after the break and play the newlywed game as well. So don't go anywhere. Justin is proud to serve as both the official boot of the Texas Rangers and the presenting partner of the Rangers Deep in the Heart podcast. Join the winning team and embrace the spirit of Texas by stepping into a new pair of Justin boots today. Crafted for fans who demand nothing but the best, Justin boots are the perfect blend of style and comfort. Walk like a champion and shop now at justinboots.com. Justin, standard of the West since 1879. All right, Rachel and Dane, you two were obviously married. You have been since 2021. How did you two meet? I'll let you answer that one. So back home, we live about 10 minutes apart from each other in Jacksonville, Florida. That's where our parents are still, although we moved to Charlotte. But um, we have a lot of mutual friends back home. Honestly, I'm surprised that we didn't get connected sooner. Um, I would say Donovan Phillips is probably... um, The biggest connector, Dane and I were both home at one point, which I don't know how that happened either because I was in college and he was playing um, pro ball. I I just got back from, uh, like, I just got home from the offseason, like, for the offseason. So it was, like, I think early September. Um, I think you were back home because a hurricane was going to hit Tallahassee. Yeah, when I was at Florida State. So I must have been home from the hurricane, like you said. and. We ended up playing top golf. That's how that's how you do yeah. it in Florida. You go play top golf when there's a hurricane coming through. <laughs> <laughs> um, but well, the yeah. hurricane wasn't going to hit Jacksonville. So, but uh, well, this is a little funny story about kind of our first date. Um, and this is I wouldn't say it was our really first one on one date because Sierra came. But <laughs> uh, yeah, but there's always we, a friend that tags yeah, along. Yeah, yes. So we went to get frozen yogurt, and this is like one of the first times where like it's just like us meeting, obviously with Sierra, but, um, <laughs> you know, I was feeling really cool. It was right after the 2016, like, draft and that, like, um, and that kind of half season that I played, you know, I just, just signed, so I just got paid a little bit, and um, I just had a brand new truck that I was, you know, feeling all cool and stuff like that, and so I pull up and uh, park my car. I'm feeling awesome. We go get frozen yogurt. I go to pay for it, and I I left my wallet at home, and he I was, pulled the wallet trick on I me. Was oh so, no! I was so embarrassed, and um, like I was in for like I lived five minutes away, but I was like, hey, like I can run back to the house real fast and grab my wallet and come back. Like it'll just it'll take me like five ten minutes. Like blah blah. And she was like, oh no, like I'll get it and I'll pay for it. And so she paid for her first date. <laughs> yeah, hilarious. Yeah, and now she never lets me live it down. So she lets she always. Yeah, frozen yogurt on me. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. So uh, what was your first date, just the two of you? Maybe Sierra staying back. Um, we went to um, at the town center in Jacksonville, Florida. It's like an outdoor shopping mall. Yeah, yeah. It's it's I mean, there's not a lot of places to go in Jacksonville, and that's but that's one of the places to go. Um, mm-hmm. We went to um, God. I always mix these names up. Was it? It's P. F. Chang's, right? No, no. no it's um, he's gonna get in trouble. It was the Cheesecake Factory. Oh, that's what it was. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They all look so similar. With yeah, those. they do. Big okay. chains. I get yeah, it. Oh, yeah, the Cheesecake Factory pretty much has the same menu as P. F. Chang's. <laughs> Except for the cheesecakes. I guess. They ha- yeah, both of them have a huge menu, I guess. Yeah. We'll give it to you. It's like an encyclopedia. Those menus are massive. Yeah. yeah. It's like anything you want, they but got. I'm trying to think. You got the miso salmon. No, I got the miso salmon. And you got the, um, I want to say the chicken alfredo, right? I don't know. I think it was That's impressive. Yeah. yeah. It's good that he wow. knew that. Yeah. She you wore, redeemed yourself with the frozen a yogurt. She striped yeah. dress. <laughs> And then I wore a gray T-shirt and jeans and boots. Yeah, boot guy yeah. with wow. his truck. And I had, like, a gray hat. And I remember at that time, too, I was very confused on why she even decided to go on a date with me. Because at that time, I, you know, I was, like, at the time I was single and just doing 
stupid stuff. So I cut my hair into a very like weird, like it was very short on the sides and it was like very long on top. Oh my god! And like I, I essentially did like the little, like the little man bun, but just on top. It was, we all yeah. go through phases. Oh yeah. We and saw wow. through it. Yeah. We knew we could get it cut later down the road. Yeah. It was okay. <laughs> Had to start somewhere. Yeah. A man bun. Yeah. Wow. Okay. You learn something new every day. Yeah. It wasn't like your typical man bun. It was literally because I left the top of my head, like, like the hair long. It was like probably three, four inches long. And then yeah. I would do like a little bun like right here. But he always I mean, wore a hat. So yeah. it wasn't horrible all the time. <laughs> it's like yeah. it was, it was hidden. Oh, that's awesome. So yeah. how long did you two date before you got engaged? Um, two I mean, that was years, two and a half, but we had a long yeah, engagement, yeah. so it's like it felt like we were dating because yeah, for... we started dating at the end of 2017 and then we got engaged at the end of 2019. Yeah, two and years, then and married. then we had like almost a two year engagement, yeah, also. Yeah, I for the engagement to us getting married, I like kind of wanted to push it back because it was like I'm during season, so I'm gone for you know, seven months. And it's like, mm -hmm. those are things that I want to do together. You know, we want to like, taste the cake yeah. and try the food. And it's just, yeah. since we and got it, engaged in December, it's like he was going to be headed to spring training in February. Yeah, so it just, it's like me trying to focus on a season. It's like, you know, instead of being on the phone, like, Hey, like, let's try to do this, this, and this, like, what DJ do you want? What flowers do you want? Blah, blah, blah. Like, um, and there was you know, a good piece of that, though, too, like a lot yeah. of planning during the season as well. But but it worked out, though, because yeah. COVID hit and people's weddings were getting canceled left and right. And I was like, wow, this is like it, it ended up being like a blessing in disguise for us. So it was it was it was really cool just being able to um, kind of see, you know, like not see, but it was really cool, like for us to be able to kind of go on our own pace. And that was I think that helped out a lot. What was something at your wedding that each of you just had to have? So, Rachel, we'll start with you. So, for me, I think something unique about our wedding was the food. I love Cuban food. So, we had, like, rice and beans and pork and shrimp and everything was so delicious. Plantains are another one of my, like, favorite foods. I don't, I don't know what led us to that. I guess St. Augustine has a little bit of that flair there, and the food was just, mm, it was delicious. Um... Mine was probably going to be either the music. Or entrance. Well, the entrance, I was very adamant about that, too. Yeah. I, I was getting there. Okay, sorry. But the music was one of them that was, like, I wanted to make sure was, you know, people had a good time, and, like, it wasn't, like, and it ended up being where a couple, like, a couple times our DJ, like, threw some random remixes of certain songs that shouldn't have remixes, and, um... But it, it, on all in all, it was great. But our entrance was, that was, like, one of my biggest asks with our, like, wedding planner and all that was, like, can I do this? And um, the people said yes. So we, the, where we got married at was, it's, like, a half wedding venue, half um, antique car dealership. Oh, wow. And like Industrial, there's, yeah, the like, brick. Yeah. Like, it was and beautiful. the back of the car dealership has, like, they have, like, their own garage and, like, one of the cars that they're making is they're trying to break the world, like, the speed record for, or something like that. And um, so, like, they do that as, like, a side business and stuff like that, or the wedding as a side business. But, like, they have, like, some cool antique cars. So, like, during a wedding, like, there was an, like, old Model T. There was an old, um, like, an old, old uh, Toyota, like, kind of, like, Jeep-looking car. I can't think of what, I can't remember off the top of my head what it is. Mm -hmm. But then there was like an old Ashton Martin. Um, um, there was a um, kind of like an older white. I can't remember what model this is, but almost like Bonnie and Clyde type, um, like vehicle, like from that age, like I think seventies or sixties or something like that. Um, so it was really cool because like a cu like a couple of those aspects were there, but like since they're or like a dealership, they have to move, it's a two-story building, so they have to move the cars up and down. And so one of the asks that I had was, can we do our wedding entrance coming down the car lift? Wow. And mm -hmm. so while everyone else, like all of our bridesmaids and groomsmaids were, um, groomsmen, <laughs> <laughs> were walking in, when it, when they when it came to us, like we, we came down on a car lift, and we had like a fog machine that like flowed over the sides. Um, and it was really cool. It was a really unique 
re- like really unique entrance. Wow. Yeah. What I song was it to? Oh my god. That I can't remember. I don't remember what song we got introduced to. I think this will be like this will be. Oh, that's oh, a good yeah. one. The parent trap yeah. song. Yeah. 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 That's a good one. Yeah. That's awesome. Wow, that's really, really fun. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so now let's talk about Mac. So you had Mac last season in 2023, and it was during this season. I remember going over to yep. your locker. I'm like, is she in labor yet? How's Rachel doing? <laughs> yeah. And one day you just weren't there, and the time had happened. So what are the logistics of finding out your wife is going into labor during season and the process of being on the paternity list? Yeah, so we were in Pittsburgh during that time, and for us it was very fortunate how it worked out. Um, so we were in Pittsburgh. We – um, like I just, I think I just pitched the day before or mm-hmm. something like that. And, um, I remember I had a flight booked that night to go back and visit them. Cause we had, we, it was the last day in Pittsburgh. Then we had an off day that we we're playing in Baltimore. So I was like, Hey, like I asked the people, I, I asked like, you know, our front office, like, do you care if I fly back to, to Charlotte, spend the day with her and then go up to Baltimore? Mm-hmm. And they're like, yeah, sure. That's fine. Like I'll just, you know, fly up that f- morning of the Baltimore game so during the game like I already had my flight booked it was like 6 30 or something like that mm-hmm. um game starts it's you know 135 game we're about two innings in and then um Mike Maddox so Mad Dog um walked up to me and puts his hand on my shoulder and goes it's time and I was so confused at that point I was like like oh because he, she wasn't supposed to be due for another month. And so I was sitting there, like, looking at him, like, what do you mean it's time? And he's like, go inside, go see Blake Miller. Like, it, it's time. And then it hit me. And I think that was the fastest 60 time, like, 40 time running up those stairs that I've ever ran in my entire life. But, uh, but yeah, so I talked to Blake Miller. He told me that Rachel called and that, it was all going down. Like you need to call her. And he was like, you know, I'm pretty much like hyperventilating at that point. And, uh, he's like, you know, take deep breath, give her a call. We'll get it situated. Josh Shelton's already looking at flights like to get you there as soon as possible. And so I, I go and FaceTime her and she's at the house doing the dishes. Oh my God. (laughs) She's like, I just, well, when I come back, I want the house to be clean. And I'm like, yeah, you don't want to bring a baby home to a dirty house. <laughs> That's so fair. Yeah, and, and, and I, I had some time. Yeah, and, like, the cool part, so, like, she, like, her water broke, and she went to see OB. I can't, OB. Uh, can't, I couldn't think of that. And, like, they confirmed it and all that, and they're like, you can go home and, you know, take a... Get something yeah. to eat. Like, do whatever you need to do. And since I was so early, like, I'm a big procrastinator, unfortunately, and so I didn't have a hospital bag. I didn't... Our bassinet was on the way. Yeah, um, all, so all of our baby stuff was still on the way being shipped. Like, we oh, had my it, we had it, Like, it was ordered. Yeah. I, I wasn't that horrible, but it just wasn't going to be delivered like, by the yeah. time that baby Mac was coming home. And fortunately enough, my parents were in Pittsburgh, and they were driving down, and they just the happened to be, like an hour outside of Charlotte when that phone call happened. And so I was like, Hey, like this is happening. You guys just stopped by. And then I was like calling them like, I need you to go get a car seat. I need you to go get this and that. (laughs) And so they like, they went and got all these things for us, which was so helpful. Mm -hmm. Her mom flew up. And then the earliest flight from Pittsburgh to Charlotte was the flight that I already had booked. Oh, wow. So yeah, I went to um, like, I went and got changed and, headed off to the airport and then just took that flight back and um you know fortunately i was able to make it yeah yeah because he was born that next day which was awesome so last season there were over 10 babies born Mm -hmm. within the rangers organization including mac of course so how did you lean on the other rangers wives during that newborn phase and just juggling that with the season Well, the team in general just has a lot of families as you Mm know um and there's a lot of families with like four plus kids or three plus kids so definitely a lot of um, veteran moms that are able to um, answer any questions that I had and everyone's so great I would be getting texts all the time how are you doing how's Mac Um, so definitely I felt comfortable to ask any and all questions you know Jankowski Simeon's like so many so many kids (laughs) and so many moms that were able to lean on so that was really great. So how do you two juggle being parents during the chaos of a baseball season now that you have at least a year under your belt? Um, 
I mean, for like for me personally, I'm gone so much of the day. Like I get to the field at one and I'm usually home by like 11. Um, so usually like for the most part on like in the mornings, I'll get up with Mac and, you know, I'll take, I'll let her sleep in because she's with them the entire day. So it's like, you know, Hey, get your rest. Like I can get up and I'll get up with them. And, mm-hmm. um, so then he usually wakes up around like seven thirty, eight o'clock, which is fine. Like I go to sleep around like 1130 midnight and I'll get seven hours, seven and a half, sometimes eight. Like sometimes he's great and sleeps till nine. Um, but for the most part, I'll get up with him and, you know, feed him breakfast and play with him in the mornings and stuff like that. And then she'll get up and, um, yeah, because that's his time. So if yeah. if he didn't spend the mornings with him, he You're really like, wouldn't be able to see him yep. much. So I think they really um, that you really value that time oh, yeah. getting to spend with him in the morning. Yeah, and then on day games, I'm already getting up in the morning anyway. So it's like I'll get up with him and do what I need to do until I have to leave, mm-hmm. and then and then she'll get up and take it from there. And then afterwards, usually I'm like, hey, you. I was like, you go. I'll take it Tag from him. here. Yeah. <laughs> But uh, one of the biggest things for me is, you know, in off days is, like, she's with them so much. So a lot of these off days I've been, hey, like, go do something. Like, I'll take Mac for the day. Like, go play pickleball or go, you know, get a massage or something like that. Like, you deserve it. Like, I mean, essentially she's single parenting for the most part of the day. And, um, you know, I'm doing that practically every single day. So it's, like, uh, off days happen. It's, like, hey, go. Like, go do something, get away, like, get your own time and be able to do that. And um, so I try to let her, you know, kind of have some fun after that. Rachel, what are some of your favorite ways to spend, you know, just a day by yourself on a Rangers off day? I think you pretty much summed it up. Like, if I have any time to myself, I really enjoy playing pickleball. That's just my my thing. I love being active. Growing up playing sports, like, it's so nice to have something to feel competitive mm-hmm. in again. And, you know, after baseball said and done, I'm hoping to get Dane to play with me at some <laughs> point, too. But, yeah, love love some time to myself. Obviously, Mac is the best thing that's happened to us, but love getting my nails done. <laughs> I love yeah. playing pickleball. Um, spending time with friends, those types of things have been really um, great for me whenever there is an off day, and I appreciate you so much for letting me do those. Yeah. Well, I mean, you, you hang out with him the whole time. Like, that's the least I can do. Dane, how has being a dad either shifted your perspective as a player or changed the way that you view things on the field? Um, I mean, on the field, my views are pretty much the same because it's, I mean, it's irrelevant to essentially being a dad. Like, I mean, I got to go out there and perform and do the best I can and I'm going to give it 110%. And, you know, if it works out, great. If it doesn't, like, you know, the next time I get a, cha- a chance, I'm going to go 100%, 110% again. So... The, that view hasn't changed, but uh, just the, more or less the view of, like, kind of being in the locker room and uh, obviously off the field, that's changed significantly. Um, you know, a, a, a lot of my focus now is is him and, and her. Like, I only get so much time to spend with him. And it's like before he was born, like, I play a lot of video games. And even a little bit after he was born, I was still – kind of playing because he took so many naps so I was able to play when he napped but like now I don't I mean I don't I haven't played a video game since spring training um so he does have to play video games sometimes because we typically have a charity event that we do during the year so I'm like you can practice a little (laughs) so you don't you know feel embarrassed if you don't do well (laughs) or whatever so yeah he he does play video games sometimes but this year he hasn't really played much at all yeah and so I mean, I just I want to spend as much time as, with them as possible because I'm gone so much, and um, you know, it's just being able to like, like, the new perspective is just cherishing moments with my family and being able to do stuff with my family. It's, I think that's the biggest thing, and just, and overall, just having fun and enjoying where we are in life and uh, enjoying what we have and you know our time together. So that's really the biggest things. Are you guys ready to play the newlywed game? Yes, sure. that's going to be fun. So obviously, of <coughs> course, you're Mac's parents, but you're also Mr. and Mrs. Dunning. So it's probably been a few years since you guys have played this. So, Rachel, I'll ask you a few questions about Dane, and then he'll say if they're correct or incorrect, and then we'll flip-flop. Oh, no. All right, you ready? ready? Yeah. Okay. Rachel, what is Dane's dream golf trip? Gosh, this is so hard. So on our honeymoon, I know that was incredible. We went to Lanai, 
and they had a beautiful course. But I feel like the course that I've heard about the most is maybe Pebble Beach. No. Okay. I, <laughs> see, I'm but, but horrible. And this, well, this one is kind of like. Is it one that I just wouldn't even. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, a course I don't want to play in. I can't even think of what it's called right now. But it's in Utah. Oh. It's, um, you know, it's a kind of canyon style course but they have like the famous um island green that's kind of like right up against like a a cliff i can't i can't think of what it's called right now and it's gonna drive me nuts um but yeah that's kind of that's kind of my favorite like your dream yeah my dream course to go but i mean pebble beach is still up there nice okay on to the next question who was dane's favorite baseball player when he was little that's so hard, too, because <laughs> what's funny about Dane, which I always was shocked at, is he didn't really watch much baseball growing up. Interesting. Like, he didn't yeah. have a favorite MLB team. I feel like if he did, it was just whatever team is close, which would have been the Braves or the Rays. Um, so I honestly can't answer that question. Okay. So I am horrible. I, so I watched a lot of players, like specific players. So like I liked watching Greg Maddox growing up. Like he was one of my, he's one of my idols. That's who I should have yes, said. Yes. Um, and like meeting him last year in spring training was like the coolest thing ever. Um, other than that, like Pedro Martinez, I always loved watching him. I'm nothing like Pedro Martinez, like pitching wise or even like mentality wise. Uh, cause Obviously, on the mound, he was kind of a hothead. Um, and then, you know, I love watching, like, Jeter play. And I love watching, you know, I would always go back and look at highlights of, like, Cal Ripken and stuff like that. So those were cool. Um, but, yeah, I would have to say my top person would probably be, you know, um, little brother is what Mad Dog would usually say. So Little brother, I little love brother. that. And then finally, what is Dane's best quality as a dad? Oh, my gosh. He totally is the fun dad. Um, I come home and, you know, Max sees me all day, every day. And, you know, he kind of brushes me off. But when Dane walks in the door, it is giggles and smiles and dadas. And it makes me completely jealous because I know that Mac loves having a good time with Dane. And Dane probably does the risky things with him, <laughs> um, as dads do. And it's just really fun watching him be the fun dad, although I'm a little bit jealous. <laughs> I love that. Well, Dan, we're going to turn the tides now. So Alrighty. what is Rachel's yes. best quality as a mom? That, I mean, that's a hard one to answer just because there's so many good qualities. So many, not even good qualities, great qualities. Um, I mean, the I would probably say the biggest quality is just the, the like, the instant being able to like recognize and like, you know, how he's, how he's doing. I mean, she literally was, you know, we had double ear infection and she was like, he spiked a fever and it's like instant nurturing, like caring for him and just knowing like, Hey, I, I I'm almost a hundred percent positive. Like it's ear infection, stuff like that. I think that's one of the biggest things for me. Cause it allows me to kind of stay calmer in situations. Cause he, she's able to figure out, you know, things like that immediately and like knows what to do. And like, I, and she, and she'd probably say she doesn't know what to do, but to me, it looks like she's on it and like knows what to do exactly. And I'm sitting there like, I would be in a full panic attack, not knowing what to do. And, and I mean, she handles that so very well. So that's probably my biggest, like the, my, one of my favorite qualities of it. Um, what is Rachel's guilty pleasure TV show? Ooh, there's a lot of these. Um, because I'm a show hopper, yes. so it's, that's she, a hard so question one of, to So one answer. of her things is that she never finishes the show. She will watch, like, she'll binge, like, two seasons of it and then hop to another show and binge two seasons of that and then go to a different one, and then she'll come back to that one. We love variety. Um, I like yeah. it. Yeah. Guilty pleasure show, I would have to say, would either be Grey's Anatomy or The Bachelor. Yeah, I'd say that's right. I'll okay. give it to you. Like, she... Always finds her way back to Grey's Anatomy. But the thing is, though, is she, every time she goes back, she always restarts it, and she still never finishes it. <laughs> well, because I love the first couple seasons. It's the best. But I wouldn't know because I haven't finished it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> hey, you have a lot of seasons to get through. Yeah. So you have some time. Yeah. Finally, who is Rachel's dream pickleball partner? Ooh. That one, that one would probably be tough. I'd probably say Ben Johns. Yeah, he's the best. Yeah. 
best. Yeah, I'll probably say, yeah, for male partner, Ben Johns, and then... Female is obvious. Yeah, yeah, it would probably be Anna Lee. Anna Lee Waters, yeah. yeah. There you go. Phenom. Well, that's our newlywed game. You guys both killed it. So that was fun. We have some more games coming up when we come back from break. We'll have them answer my signature question, take some fan submissions, and so much more. Some people find comfort in sitting still, but not you. You were born to explore, to seek out adventure, and to live life to its fullest. Discover the Frontier Collection by Justin Today. Featuring out-of-the-box comfort and 12 stylish designs, the Frontier Collection is built for those who go the extra mile and get the most out of life. From the saddle to the streets and everything in between, the Frontier Collection by Justin is right there with you. For just $199, you can find your Frontier today at justinboots.com. And speaking of Justin Boots, Rachel and Dane, it's time for Start, Sit, Give the Boot. So I'll give each of you three topics within the category, and you will rank start as your favorite, sit as the middle of the pack, and then give the boot to your least favorite. So Rachel, we'll go ahead and start with you with Pickleball Paddle Brands. So we have Jula, Selkirk, and Onyx. Honestly, the way you listed that is exactly how I would list it. So we're going to start Yola. We're gonna oh, sorry, I said that one wrong. Yola, my bad. No, it's okay. <laughs> Yola, and then Selkirk was what? You said Second. sit. Yeah. Sit, sit, and then, sorry, Onyx, we're giving you the boot. Give the boot. Yeah. All right. It's okay. Last time, we did um, Hawaiian golf courses with Kirby and Ashley, and I just botched every single name. So I guess it's just <laughs> a reoccurring theme on the show. And then, Dane, for you, we have anime. So we have Demon Slayer, Dragon Ball, and Attack on Titan. Oh, that's tough. Oh. Demon Slayer's... Definitely start. That's by far my favorite right now. It's so good. Um, the next one is such is so tough because it's like Dragon Ball is like my childhood. Like I watched a lot of Dragon Ball growing up, and I'll still occasionally watch it here and there. But Attack and Titan, that storyline is just unbelievable. Um, God, can I just sit both of them? Yeah, like, it's fine. I'm gonna have to sit both of them. I can't really give. No one's getting the boot. Yeah. Um, I mean, you know, to keep it actually fair in the game, I would, I would probably just sit Attack on Titan and give the boot to Dragon Ball, Dragon Ball Z. It's just, like, as much as my childhood, it's kind of, I mean, it's dated now, so it's a little bit, but it's still, like, I still go back and watch it, so. You're probably going to hurt some feelings. If oh, oh, John Gray <laughs> is going to yell at me for sure, because that's yeah. him and LeClerc. Both of them love Dragon Ball still. LeClerc's so. an anime guy? Oh, yeah. How did you get into anime? Uh, so my one of my best friends, AJ Puckett, when we were rehabbing together in 2019 with Tommy John, uh, he's really big in anime, and he's always watched it since he was a kid. And I was the typical, like, oh, I'm not going to watch that. That's stupid, blah, blah, blah. Like, you know, anime sucks. Like, and, my, and he was just like, trust me, just, like, watch this episode. And so, like, I watched one episode of Attack on Titan. That was actually the first one I watched, which is kind of wild. and Because it's, um, it's a very gory uh, mm-hmm. anime. But, <clears throat> sorry, excuse me. But, um, but, yeah, no, he was like, just watch this episode. So I watched it. And I was like, wow, this is actually, like, really cool. Like, it was pretty good. And so and then I watched another episode and then another one. And then next thing you know, I was like, like, hey, how do I watch this? Like, let me just go through it. And we just binged through that whole season. And so once we got through watching Attack on Titan, he was like, hey, you need to try out Demon Slayer. And so I watched that and, like, was like, this was sick. And then from there, it was just like I started researching my own animes where I was like, <laughs> all right, like, you know, Jiu-Jitsu Kaisen or stuff like that. Like, I started going, you know, and watching, you know, other ones. And so now I'm hooked and I'm, I watch it all the time. Yeah. We'll have to check those out. Okay, now it's time for our signature question. So let's say the team's playing in Seattle and you miss the flight, so you have to road trip 2,000 miles from the Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex to Seattle. Rachel, which Ranger's wife, girlfriend, or fiancé would you take with you? I would definitely take Jacqueline Gray. I think Jacqueline is just so much fun. I feel like she would know all the spots. Um, always up for a good time. Mm-hmm. She would she would just be a blast to have on a long lo- road trip for sure. She's been a very popular answer this season. <laughs> yeah, so I she's love just, that. She's just the best. Yeah. Dane, what about you? Either with a Rangers player or coach. Um, so if we're going coach, I'm going with Bobby Wilson. He's also a popular yes, answer. Yes, he is. 
Bobby's a one of a kind human being, and he is so much fun to be around. He's just he's funny, but he can you know lock it in and be serious when he needs to. But um, he's he's a good time. Um, player, I mean that's a toss up because there's there's a lot of good choices. Uh, you know our team has. You know, I kind of I feel like I mesh very well with a lot of our team, so it's just it can go any route. Um, if I had to choose, like spe- like specifically one person, I would probably pick John Gray. He chose you. Oh, so oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'll probably pick trip. John because, <laughs> like, I mean, me and John get along very well, and um, like we have a lot of very similar hobbies and stuff like that. So, and I think like us on a road trip together would just be hilarious. So I'd probably pick John. Yeah. I think when he gave that answer for you, he said we'd talk about nerd stuff. Oh, yeah. The All whole the time. time. The whole so time, yeah. That's yeah. awesome. I love that. The feeling's mutual. Okay, now let's move along to some fan questions. What is your go-to date night in the DFW Metroplex without Mac? Nobu. Easily. That's, that's not even a – like, literally every time we get a date night, it's we go straight to Nobu. Um, so we discover Nobu on our honeymoon. So the place where we stayed at was the Four Seasons on Lanai. And um, they had a Nobu there. And we're like, you know, it's a honeymoon. Who cares how much we're spending? Like, we're going to go eat dinner. And we would get the amakase, and it was, like, unbelievable. And then Mm -hmm. from there, when we went to season here in 22, there was a Nobu. Like, we found out the Nobu was here, so we're like, we're going. And then Mm -hmm. now it's just been – so every off day, we just – like, well, not every off day, but That's every... That's, like, our bougie answer, but yeah. we also really love going to the movies together. Yep. Oh, fun! Yeah, because that's something, like, obviously with a one-year-old, he's not able to do mm-hmm. yet, so it's really nice to have, like, two hours to just relax, yeah, recline, sit, sleep, yeah. popcorn, <laughs> yeah. all, the, all the things. Yeah, we did that last night where, like, my parents watched, watched Mac for us, and we went and saw the new Deadpool movie. And oh, it nice. Was, it was a very, very nice getaway. Yeah. And they have some fancy movie theaters here in Texas, too, with oh, yeah. the in-seat yes. delivery and recliners and mm-hmm. open bar and all that kind of stuff. That's awesome. Okay, Dane, who is the best and worst golfer on the team? Uh, best golfer, um, I guess it kind of just depends on, I mean, it just depends on how much people play. But, like, Nate Lowe, I would probably say, is the best golfer on the team. Like, he is... Like, when he actually gets some rounds together and he's able to, like, play, he's just – it's unreal how good he gets. He's just – he's very dialed with his irons. His short game is really good. And then, like, where he kind of struggles is kind of more off the tee box than anything else. But, I mean, he swings a baseball bat for a living, so it's, you know, a little bit different yeah. than a, in a golf swing. So, um, like, I've seen him go out and shoot 73s, 74s, 75s. And then at the same time I've seen him shoot – 85s, 86s. <laughs> so, I mean, it just kind of depends on what you're getting with him. Um, I'd probably say he's the best on our team right now. And I, I haven't played golf with everyone on the team, so I don't know. Um, the worst on the team would probably be someone who hasn't played. So, um, I mean, you could probably go with any Latin player on our team. They've probably never played golf. But out of someone who's like out of the players and unfortunately I would probably have to say this would probably be John but he's just a fun time to be around on the golf course he swings that club so hard and when he <laughs> does connect and it goes straight it goes so far so um that's probably yeah probably to be the answer this next one is probably the most random fan submission we've had who on the team would you want to live with for a hundred days oh easily John Gray yeah easily we would literally You'd just be gaming for the 100 days straight. But, yeah, it would be playing like little – yeah. Or watching anime, playing video games. Yep, that would be us. Like, just all crunched up afterwards and, like, yeah. Sounds like a match made in heaven. Mm-hmm. Okay, Dane, how often do you get new rec specs? Um, I mean, I try to go every year, but um, for some reason I just didn't get one this past year. So, um, I mean, my, my – it just depends on if my eyesight's changing. And for the most part, it hasn't, it's not like substantial enough to change where I'd be like, hey, I need glasses immediately. Um, so I'm pretty much every other year. And what made you pick wearing glasses over contacts, especially for games? Uh, that one is more, I screwed myself on that one. <laughs> um, I mean, I've worn contacts from third grade all the way to college. And in college, I didn't sleep a lot. Um, 
And then when I did fall asleep, like, some days I would leave my contacts in or some days, like, I would obviously still take them out. But, like, I would be, you know, I'd only get so much time. So, like, I wasn't getting enough oxygen to my eyes. And so my eyes started kind of, like, rejecting contacts. So, like, even now, like, I'll try putting them in. It's like I put them in and, like, 10 minutes later, my eyes, like, go bloodshot red. Like, Mm -hmm. they just get really irritated. Um, Like, and I don't even wear glasses now. And there's times where, like, you'll, like she notices it every once in a while, but I'll be like blinking a bunch and it's like my eyes just get dried out. So, um, I've tried all different types of contacts with like, you know, ones that are like, you know, super moist and stuff like that. And it just, it irritates. So then I was like, you know, screw it. I'll just take the glasses. Finally, out of all the dude, perfect videos, we know that you're a massive fan of theirs. Which video is your favorite aside from the Rangers one, of course. Yeah. Um, God, that's a good question. Uh, probably my favorite one goes way back when they're in Frisco like doing the Frisco at our, at our um, Rough Rider Stadium. And, I mean, this my probably my favorite one is where Tony hits the basketball off a tee and swishes it into the, like, into a hoop that's, you know, on, like in center field at the Rough Rider Stadium. I think that video is probably one of my favorites. Um, but, I mean, they, they just do a good job in general of being able to – make videos super entertaining like you know just fun to watch so uh, they there's a good group of guys there that do a good job you were such an integral part too of having the rangers video come to life with dude perfect this past spring so what was something throughout that shooting process or just from start to finish that you'll always remember just how authentic they are like when they do videos i mean obviously they've been doing it for a long time so it's it probably comes significantly easy to them now but it's just like for the most part it was like one take and done like um every like if they had to say anything it was like they said it right then and there and it was like perfect every time but no for the most part like what you guys see in the video is is their actual selves like that's who they are as people they're just fun energetic people it's not like they're putting on a show for it's not like they're putting on a show for people to like see it's like that's how they are in general. And it's, it's really cool just to be able to see like, you know, Tyler goes and robs a Homer and just like full celebration. And like, he's just ecstatic about it. And then like him getting the hit off, you know, Leclerc, like, it's just like, it's very, it's very authentic. Just all those reactions. So it's just, it's super cool. Just seeing that behind the scenes and then being able to tie it with the videos. Rachel, what was your reaction when you saw the Rangers Dude Perfect crossover video? I know that they were working on this for a long time, so it was so cool to see it come to life. And honestly, big credit to them because I think they did an amazing job. Um, I know a lot of them came from sports growing up, but I think um, they fit right in. They look good in a Rangers uniform. They had an absolute blast. It was so fun. It was also so fun having you guys join the show today. So thanks again for your time. I really appreciate it. Yeah, no problem. Thank you for having us. Absolutely. It was an awesome one. Well, everybody, that is episode eight of Rangers Deep in the Heart, presented by Justin, the official boot of the Texas Rangers. Signing off from Globe Life Fields, I'm Hannah Wing. We'll see you in a few weeks.